Hello, I am Cyril Memoir and welcome to my new player's guide for UCM. In this video, I will be introducing the 5 element sect and its characters and some basic strategies you can employ to start winning games. The 5 element sect is a bit intimidating at a glance, but I promise it's much simpler than it looks. The core mechanic of the sect is the namesake 5 elements. Most cards here will be one of the 5 elements and have an additional effect if the card played before it is of the same element or the preceding element on the elemental wheel. For example, to get the Fire Spirit effect of Fire Spirit Rush, you can play a Fire Spirit card or a Wood Spirit card immediately before it. There is one other way to get an Elemental Spirit effect. The Elemental Seal, such as Fire Spirit Seal, activate an element when played. Once an element has been activated, all cards of that element will have that elemental effect for the rest of the fight. Typically, 5 element cards have very high synergy within their own element and additional synergy with the elements preceding and after it. But this varies from element to element. The five elements each have their own specialities. Going around the elemental circle, water generates force of water, a buff that inflicts damage to your opponent at the end of your turn. Wood specializes in multi-hit attacks and building up attack up to unleash a flurry of devastating attacks. Fire targets the opponent's max HP, reducing their HP down to zero regardless of their defense. Earth is the most defensive element and builds up increasing amounts of defense the longer fights go and Metal builds up a buff called Penetrate that it unleashes in a single attack to knock out opponents. Five Elements is the sect that changes the most with its characters, with multiple characters specializing in one or two elements, so I'd recommend checking out the character section to learn more about that. During the early game, your focus should be on ensuring your board is full of fully activated elemental cards. Typically, this will be done by starting with one of the cheap producing seals, Wood, Fire, or Water, and then playing cards of the preceding elements until you reach Metal, and then playing non-elemental cards thereafter. Five Elements Fletch is a fantastic villa card and you will generally play as many as you draw. Don't worry too much about sticking to one or two elements here. Your early game does not early inform your late game. You can also run a cheerless board by absconding water, wood and fire altogether and focusing on earth and metal exclusively. This star can be hard to branch out from unless you are planning on playing one of these two elements, but it's still worth considering if your draw supports it. As the game progresses, sub out the tier 1 elemental cards for stronger cards from the higher tiers as you approach the mid-game and start building towards your strategies. The 5 elements each have their own coherent game plan that is very capable of winning games. While it's only the tip of the iceberg for the sect, learning the fundamentals of each element is a great basis for exploring more complex strategies. Mono Water is a deck about draining the opponent in a deluge of water while using defensive tools and HP scaling to weather your opponent's attacks. The tier 4 card Great Waves is essential, as when paired with Water Spirit Formation, it is the best source of Force of Water in the entire game. On tier 5, Combined Rivers converts that Force of Water into a huge pool of HP that grows every turn. The deck really becomes a powerhouse as a late game deck, with a combination of Heavenly Mario Rhythm Level 2 and the Formation Master Sidejob card Echo Formation Level 2, resulting in a deck that plays two high impact cards every turn. Dive is another card that can be used to push past opponents who are trying to burst you down while giving your scaling time to take over. As the deck requires a high number of tier 4 and tier 5 cards, I'd recommend conserving rolls till tier 4. Once you have a couple of copies of Great Waves, you can try and conserve the rest of your rolls till tier 5. One important note, Great Waves does not upgrade particularly well. You will generally want to play them separate and not combine them until you have at least 3. Mono Wood is a bit of a misnomer, as the deck will generally play a combination of wood and fire cards. The core of the game plan is to use the Wood Spirit card Fragrant, along with another high chi generating card to start a fight with 2 to 4 attack up. From there, cards that chase like Forest Guard and Willow Leaf pair with multi-hitting wood and fire cards to defeat opponents. When everything goes well, you will be able to win fights on turn 4 or turn 5. Due to the necessity of Fragrant for a long term strategy, Saving rolls until tier 4 has a lot of value. Elixirist in particular has Spiritage Elixir, which fills the requisite requirement for 2 attack up from Fragrant. A quick note on Wood Spirit Formation, this card is very strong with a full wood board on tier 3, but it does not have a home in the endgame board. Use it, but then lose it. Monofire is a pure race, burning opponent's max HP down to 0 with little in the way of defense for the player. The strategy revolves around Fire Spirit Formation and Flash Fire, along with multi-hitting fire attacks and cards like Fire Spirit Blast that deal damage directly to the enemy. Fire has a curious inflection point where its early cards cost cheap, but the true powerhouses of the deck 
Flash Fire and Heart Fire do not. Mono Fire hits its power spike on tier 4 with Flash Fire and Heart Fire, but Blast and Fire Spirit Formation are tier 3 cards you will play for the whole game. Find your Fire Spirit Formation on tier 3 and then use as many rolls as possible on tier 4, finding Flash Fires and Heart Fires. The tier 5 card Blazing Prairie will often be weaker than Heart Fire in this strategy, so don't hold back. Roll on tier 4 and make your board as strong as possible. Monofire can also splash earth cards like Dust and Combined Worlds if its engine is too slow to win fights. Don't be afraid to branch out if your opponent is out racing you. Mono Earth plays surprisingly similar to Mono Water, utilizing Heavenly Mara and Echo Formation to scale up, in this case, its defense. Earth Spirit Formation is on Tier 2 along with the Formation card Kako Poisonous Formation. Saving rolls on Tier 1 and then playing a board with these two formations with low level Earth cards will smash a lot of early game decks, allowing you to save additional exchanges for Tiers 4 and 5. On Tier 4 are your two big Earth Scalers, Steep and Quicksand. Steep is necessary to outscale late game decks, and while you can win fights without quicksand, it gets a lot tougher. On tier 5, combine worlds and steep pair to make it a board that is almost uncrackable when everything is assembled. Mono Earth has a lot of flexibility once it's set up, so do try to think outside the box, but don't overdo it. Mono Metal revolves around the mechanic Penetrate. Metal Spirit Formation generates Penetrate on every metal card played and can be found as early as tier 2. Penetrate is expended on any attack connecting other than Metal Spirit Shuttle, so the key of the deck is to play one key attack that double dips on Penetrate. The ideal metal board is simple and elegant. Two Metal Spirit Formations, three Shuttles, two defensive metal cards, and the Capstone Tripod. A Metal Spirit deck without Shuttles or a Tripod is not a mono metal deck. Find a copy of Metal Spirit Formation on two, but stockpile rolls for tier four and five. Sharp is a valuable holdover until tier 4, but I would not go out of my way to find one. Once you have a shuttle or two, then it's time to find that tripod on fight. Lastly, holding on to Metal Spirit Pierce to get your tripod through defense is a valuable piece of tech, but you do need to be careful to not waste your penetrate on it. Linyan is my favorite character in the game, and if you're looking for a recommendation for your first 5 elements character, she's a great way to learn. Liyuan's innate element designates one of the five elements as her element for the entire game. When you're first starting out, I'd recommend checking your element at the start of the game and forcing that element while you learn this act. Her innate element draws a card of that element every breakthrough, making it easier for her to assemble boards and affects her next to immortal baits. Innate Mark activates Liyuan's innate element at the beginning of the fight. For example, if your innate element is wood and you take her tier 2, then your wood spirit effects will be activated for the rest of the game. This immortal fate is mandatory for builds like Innate Water and Innate Earth, and is always a safe pick. Innate Spirit Formation immediately draws a level 2 version of the Spirit Formation Continuous card of your Innate Element. When you're starting, I'd recommend always taking this and building your strategy around it, though the wood one is a noticeable step down from the others. Overcome with each other is one of the strongest immortal fates in the game, it's so strong it will physically hurt you when you first read the tooltip. As a beginner, I'd recommend skipping this one or just trading them away. Once you're more comfortable with the basics, come back to it and explore one of the most intriguing cards in the sect. Five Elements Anima is geared towards a board that plays multiple elements more so than a mono element board. As long as you have taken her tier 2, you will get a little advantage from this one, but it's very skippable until you're exploring more complicated boards. Wu Xingzhi is unique in the sect as his immortal fades do not push you into playing any element over another. If you really want to explore one particular strategy, is a great character to pick up. His initial Immortal Fate rewards you with additional exchanges for every fight you win, encouraging you to spend your rolls every turn to get strong and snowball your advantage. This makes holding rolls very unappealing, and even if you are saving rolls for later turns, I would recommend using your rolls every turn to get strong. Mark of the Five Elements activates the element of the first card you play and is the key to Wu Jingzhou's flexibility. This ability is what lets you play any element you want and sculpt whatever board you want. I would suggest always taking this when you start. Gord of Leisurely gives Jingzhi access to an extra chi and a chase as long as you have played a card with his tier 2. This also has some application with the Formation Master builds as a non-elemental chase that does not break Heavenly Marrow Rhythm, allowing you to full chase with only a tier 1 Marrow Rhythm and Echo Formation. Avatar 5 Elements will save you once from being eliminated and draw you a handful of new cards. A chi death is always handy, though as a snowball character, Jingzhi often has trouble recovering from being pushed to the brink of elimination. It's still an okay bet, but it's not an exciting one. 
Finally, Inheritance of 5 Elements draws two high tier cards of a single element and is a great way to improve almost any board. Always a great pickup, but don't forget you will lose 6 exchanges as soon as you click the breakthrough button. If you have less than 6, spend them before you break through. Muhu is an earth and metal specialist with great support for either strategy but lacking abilities that support the other three elements, side of one secret strategy. His earth boards are unique, as Kunwu Metal Ring does not play well with Formation Master Continuous cards, meaning he's almost always an elixirist or painter. If you're interested in trying out metal boards, his abilities offer more support than the rest of the cast. His tier 1, Body of Fierce Tiger, makes him one of the tankiest characters in the game, and his extra bolt makes his defensive board slightly easier to set up. Quench of Wood Spirit provides Mufu with an additional 8 HP once 4 wood cards have been absorbed. This is a bit of work for 8 HP, so while it's useful, don't throw cards away you still need to play on your board. Kunwu Metal Ring activates both Metal and Earth and combines especially well with Earth and Metal Spirit formations. Because of this, it is highly advantageous to roll on Tier 2 until you have one of the, those two formations. From there, a Mono or Near Mono Element deck with the Ring and its respective formation will be very powerful. Vigorous is a powerhouse of a card. This single-handedly makes a metal base board strong on tier 4. While it's not a substitute for a tripod on tier 5, a metal spirit formation and a shuttle will often be enough to compete on tier 4 when backed by Vigorous. His final ability, Landslide, is a card that looks powerful but is deceptively hard to set up. Ideal setups involve using the painter card Flying Brush to chase a big defense card like Steep into Landslide to guarantee a big hit. When you're starting out, this one is generally not going to be worthwhile. Chinri is a water specialist with a wood sub theme. Chinri's innate fates are so strong and so tightly intertwined that it sometimes looks like she's playing a completely different game to the other sect members. With Chinri, you will usually take all of her immortal fates. Chinri starts at an effective 120 destiny and gains a stack of guard up to ignore the first hit of damage once her infusion has reached its maximum effect. The guard up tips her hand as a defensive character. As a side note, this ability has just recently been reduced to 15 extra HP down from 20. Peach Blossom Seal is a side grade to Wood Seal, and while it may look unassuming, it is a critical support for her powerful tier 5. Once Mark of Water Spirit is taken, water will be active for the entire game. The one Chi can allow you to play an extra Chi worth of cards on your board, provided the fight ends before you get back to it. Spring Rain is your mid game hard carry. A lot of boards on tier 4 simply cannot beat this card. The one she cost and water spirit activation are both met by her tier 3. One valuable interaction worth noting is if you put a metal card in your last board slot and the card 5 element circulation in slot 1 with spring rain in slot 2, you will be able to play spring rain on turns 1 and 2, doubling its effectiveness. This card drops off on tier 5 but is absolutely essential for winning fights in the mid game. You should always take it. Lastly, Blossom Dance turns Peach Blossom Seal into a card that chases if it's put after a water card, while providing a significant amount of chi and healing when following the 5 element cycle. The most straightforward application of this ability is to play a Water Spirit board that uses Peach Blossom Seal and Wood Chases to connect the Water Spirit cards like Great Waves and Combined Rivers to scale up. Nan Gong Sheng is a fire-oriented character capable of stringing elements together with fire cards to play a range of flexible boards. Xiang often ends up with very low max HP, meaning his boards need to be particularly potent to make up the difference. While he can play mono fire, his boards are often complicated and need a variety of elements to maximize the power of his secret seals. Secret Seal Affinity draws one of the secret seals on every breakthrough, with standouts being the wood and metal secret seals. The draws are random with the exception of the breakthrough to tier 5, at which point you will draw a seal of the same element of the first card in your deck. Fire Spirit Generation allows any elemental spirit effect to work after a fire card while enabling fire cards to work after any other element. This one is a key part of his unique endgame boards and is almost always worth taking. Five Elements Explosion causes any card that activates an element to immediately reduce the opponent's HP by 3. Mid game boards with this character are all about maximizing the damage dealt by this ability by playing a wide variety of seals. It may look unassuming, but this does so much damage. Flame Cell Rebirth provides a way to survive big burst turns, but with only 15 HP left over, it leaves you very vulnerable to follow up. 
This often doesn't do very much until the very late game, but it does let you steal wins that no other card would let you get away with. Lastly, Swift Burning Seal accelerates the speed of the game by providing an immediate chase from your first seal, but dramatically lowering your maximum HP. Playing a Wood Secret Seal or Metal Secret Seal with Chase in their respective element decks is good, but multi-element cards like Ultimate World Formation and World Smash are where the real strength of this ability lies. 